Good morning. <laughs> How's everybody doing? You enjoying the sunshine? I was talking to my sister on the phone. Of course, you know, she lives up in Michigan and the sun goes away like the first of November and doesn't come back out until April. So, uh, But I was telling her that, you know, we've just had a, a week of no sunshine. And she kind of went, oh, poor people. <laughs> but uh, it's good to see y'all out. And we're supposed to have a warm week this week. <laughs> Choir's getting blessed. We're going to start preaching now. So uh, it's good to see you all out. And uh, some quick announcements. And you have this one in your bullets. And look at this. You are invited to join us for Jackie Hetz. 16? <laughs> Sweet 16, aren't you, Jack? 90th birthday celebration, March 10th at the Elgin Hotel from uh, 2 to 4. So, mark the calendars. That'll, that'll be something to, to participate in. And uh, other announcements? Uh, we have a few tickets for the Beast Feast. Uh, if you... If you need a couple to give away, you can probably talk to Tori. He can get you a couple. He's got some out in his truck, he said. Uh, if you need some to give away to somebody. Um, but uh, it is coming up quickly. Uh, March 17th, 5.30, will be the Beast Beast at the County Lake Hall. And uh, Donnie's even got me a beaver in the freezer. Woo! No, not for a hat. <laughs> well, we could do that too. We're gonna we're gonna cook up some beaver. That's right. There may come a time in your life when you may have to eat some. You know, only when God says so. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you say. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I hope you're, you're uh, all keeping, keeping that in mind. And um, other announcements, make your way forward and share those. The breakfast uh, brunch is coming up today. We will begin serving, try to start serving around 12.15. Um, after Sunday school, we do need to get some things still situated, so we're aiming for that point in time. And then we'll play bingo afterwards. The tables are laden with some really awesome gifts, so come out and join us and take some <coughs> fun home. <coughs> we will not be serving beaver. <laughs> Unless something got slipped into the gravy. <laughs> no, I can't. No, 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 no. No, he did not, so we're good. Anyway. Um, <coughs> that only ground some up in the hamburger. You made sausage, with it? I made sausage. Yeah, I made sausage. Well, I'll just try and avoid those particular <laughs> items. Well, everybody's going to be first. Anyway. Um, that is for today, and please make sure that you note throughout the bulletin, if you are a worship leader, if you have the special, if you are in charge of the youth store or children's church, please make sure that you check those out. All right. A uh, week from this Friday, uh, March the 9th, is Winter Jam at Interest Bank Arena, and the youth group will be going. Um, I'll have more details next week uh, as far as when we're going to be leaving and such, uh, but the youth the youth account will take care of tickets getting in, and we'll also talk about uh, driving and who's going to get everybody there. And you're doing something this afternoon, right? Yes. Did you say that? I did. Did you want to? <laughs> okay. Also, uh, mark on your calendars. Uh, the coming events on the back of your bulletin. Daylight savings time begins on March 11th. <laughs> Listen to the collective moment. Oh. But the days will be longer. Right? 
That's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> All right, now that we've opened up that wound, we'll move on. Uh, and then mark your calendar accordingly for all of the Lenten services. We have uh, uh, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday and Easter services, along with a sunrise breakfast and a sunrise service. So, And if you get real concerned about sunrise, you know, some, some churches are like, you know, if the sun is scheduled to rise at 6 o'clock, that is when we're having the service. My sun rises at 7 every Easter. <laughs> Go figure, it's a miracle. <laughs> but it just works out good for people that want to get here. It, usually the sun does rise about 7 o'clock by the time we get here and get everything started. But we have it right outside in front of the cross that's outside. And it's a usually nice service. Begin to pray, even now, that we have good weather. That would be nice. But, uh, you know, we've been praying for moisture, and we probably didn't get specific enough. God likes it when we get specific. And so, if you now is the time to start praying for rain. Rain, not moisture. Ice is moisture. Snow is moisture. <laughs> it works, too. Rod will take what he can get. But... The rest of us kind of like rain. So, we'll pray for rain. And I hope you add that to your prayer list. I have it on mine. Because we live in a, you know, a lot of urbanites, folks that live in the cities, big cities, they don't understand the importance that we need uh, here in the rural communities for rain. And it affects them eventually. So, uh, pray for rain. Any other announcements? No teen, teen Jubilee on Wednesday. But there will be men's Bible study this Wednesday, uh, weather permitting. It's supposed to be good, but you know, the weatherman said last week was supposed to be good, and then well, it all didn't work out so well. But uh, choir practice, uh, Wednesday at 7, and men's Bible study um, following at 7.30. All right? How about birthdays? Anybody grow older? All right. Brenda baked the cake. time for anniversaries. <laughs> but we didn't sing to you. That's the important part of this whole process here. <laughs> How many years? 49. <laughs> supposed to be 49, I guess. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So, all right. Anybody else? Anniversary? No? All right. <coughs> Let's sing Happy Anniversary. Happy Anniversary. nothing else, let's prepare our hearts for what God has for us today.
Would you rise, please, and call the worship, and then remain standing for choruses. And this is responsible. I lift my eyes up to the mountain. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We look not to the mountains or valleys, even heaven or earth. For God is found among us. Wherever two or three are gathered in Christ's name, God is here among us. Come, let us worship the God of creation, the God of people, the God of community. Let us follow Jesus, for Jesus is the way. Let us worship together in faith. Amen. When you re remain standing, please, as the uh, worship team comes together. And I think we are all... Um, Kayla is, is missing this morning. Dragon. They're bright orange. Can you see them? If we had more snow, you wouldn't get lost in the dirt. <coughs> it is good to see you, though. We are so thankful that you came to join us today. From Psalm 28, 6 through 9. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever.
6, 5 through 7. You are forgiving and good, O oh Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me.
children come on down. That wasn't the last one. Go ahead and greet your neighbors. <laughs>
you. We thank you, thank you for the love that you give us. Be with us through the rest of the service. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now the kids move on now. <laughs> today. Did you have a good week? Yeah? So have you guys heard of the flu? You've had the flu? You've had the flu? <laughs> you guys have heard of the flu? It's everywhere, right? In school? Have you guys been sick? You have a Really? Have you guys been sick at school? Any friends sick at school? Or is it just... <laughs> so how are, what are some ways we can protect ourselves against the germs and flu? Wash our hands. Lots of times we need to wash our hands. This is making my nose itch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. Um, wash our hands lots. And what about... Um, what? Blow your blow your nose and then use Germex, right? So you blow your nose and not use your sleeve, right? <laughs> blow your nose and use some Germex and then what? Wash our hands some more, right? Don't share our drinks or our food with our friends or neighbors, right? That's just too itchy, guys. <laughs> so germs are sneaky. The flu and the germs are sneaky. They just kind of lurk around and they're kind of everywhere waiting for us to um, let our guard down so the germs and flu can make us sick, right? There's been some schools even closed because they had so many kids sick from school, from school missing school, so they had to close, right? Okay. Okay, so I think that the flu, flu, the flu and the germs are a lot like sin, right? Sin is just kind of sneaky too, and it's just lurking around waiting for us to let our guard down as well. What are some ways do you think that you can protect ourselves from um, sin? Huh? Like maybe say our prayers, <clears throat> read the Bible, go to Sunday school and church. So just like the flu, you can't see the flu and the germs, and you can't hear them. Just like sin, we can't see sin really either, can we? I'm going to read a verse for, from the Bible here. From Genesis 4, God said, Why is your face so dark and, and angry? It could be bright with joy if you will just do what you should. But if you refuse to obey, watch out. Sin is waiting to attack you, longing to destroy you. But you can conquer it, he said. So just like we have to protect ourselves from the flu by using tissues and antibacterial and washing our hands, we have to protect ourselves from sin, too, by saying our prayers and going to church and Sunday school. Right? You don't always say your prayers? Sometimes you forget, don't you? If I forget to say my prayers at home, sometimes I say my prayers when I'm driving to work in the morning. And it's okay. You can pray anywhere, right? Okay, let's say a prayer. Hold your hands, guys. Hey, I say a prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you will keep us safe and well. Protect us from the flu and other germs, and especially protect us from sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've got a treat for you. Can we get one of these? <laughs> 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 this time. 
remind those who are four and under may go to the nursery. And those older through fifth grade may go to the fellowship. cheerfully giving it back to you to use as you see best. In your son's name we pray. Amen. needs it. 
And so we, we look to you to open up the windows of heaven. And as we pray for rain to water the ground, we pray for your rain, your Holy Spirit, to come upon our heart and our soul. Lord, we, we do come before you. Your word says that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. There is nothing too small for us to bring to you and there's nothing too great that you can't handle. And so we, we bring before your throne these requests that have been made here. We think of, of the excitement of uh, two couples expecting uh, new additions to their family. We think of Katie and Kyle, Nick and Michelle, and we pray and ask that all would go well with the delivery and pregnancies. Lord, we pray and ask that you as the great physician would have your hand upon that new life, upon these parents. Lord, we pray too and ask that you would just be with Sue and her family as they mourn the passing of her father. That is never an easy thing to get over. Doesn't matter whether it was expected or not. We pray and ask for your comfort to be ministered to her and to her family. We pray and ask for your peace to rest upon them, and that your Holy Spirit would minister to their hearts and to their souls. Lord, we continue to lift highly before you and we pray and ask that you would just give the doctor's wisdom as she begins the treatment process. Lord, we pray and ask that you would be with the family. Give them comfort, give them peace as well. Lord, we think of Audrey, we know that there's a lot of decisions mom and dad have to make. We pray and ask that you would give wisdom in part to them. What you would have them to do that's best for her and for the family. We'll trust you. Trust your Holy Spirit as you guide them. Lord, we sometimes face difficult challenges in this life and sometimes that involves uh, the court system and we pray and ask that you be with Sean and Jenny tomorrow as they go to court. We pray and ask that you would uh, give the judge wisdom, give him clear vision into the case. We pray and ask that they would trust you for the outcome. And Lord, we're going to leave that before your throne and ask that you would do what only you can do in some of these situations. Give them a peace over the situation and give them the assurance that you are the God of justice as well as the God of mercy and love and forgiveness. And so we ask that you would be with them tomorrow. Lord, be with Dawn and I this week. We pray and ask that you would give the doctors wisdom and skill. And Lord, we're going to trust you for the outcome. Most of all, we ask that you be with us throughout the rest of the service. Open up our hearts and our minds to the truth of your word. May we leave here different people than how we arrived. May you continue to do your transforming work in us today through the truth of your word in our lives. We love you, Lord. That is why we have confidence in coming before your throne of grace. Because we know you love us. You loved us first. We're so thankful for you and for what you 
do for us, but more importantly, for what you do in us. Help us to be more like you. That the world may say they act just like their father. And may that be a badge of honor that we wear gladly and unashamed. Lord, we ask that you would help us to be bright and shining lights to the world around us this week. And we thank you for all that you are to us. Help us to pray as you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
1 through 3, and chapter 2, verses 12 through 17. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. To the angel of the church in Pergamon, write, these are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city, where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, you have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balaam to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who can hold to the teaching of the Nicolaites. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. And all God's people said, Amen. That's been a good morning already. I, I got a kick out of uh, Patty when she put that mask on. It reminded me, because, you know, it is flu season and everybody's got to wear a mask. And, I make hospital calls, and I had to make one down at St. Francis. Y'all know I wear kind of this cowboy hat and, and a fleece kind of a coat. And uh, so I put the mask on, you know, when I go in the hospital. I put it on, and I walked up. And the, the gentleman went up to his floor, went in his room, and he just had surgery. And I kind of, he was asleep, and I kind of tapped him on the shoulder, and man, he kind of rolled over and looked at me and jumped. <laughs> I think he thought I was there to rob him. I had to put my mask, pull it down real quick and say, it's Pastor Jeff, don't, don't be worried. But it is that time of the year when we have to be very careful. It's a season in the church where we have to be careful as well. We live in a time that is disturbing, to say the least. Most of us cannot go throughout the week without being kind of unsettled in our spirit. We're dealing with two, uh, we're dealing with a church here. Last week we dealt with the church of Smyrna. It was the persecuted church. They were poor, they, they struggled, but they were persecuted. They stood strong in the faith. And then the week before that, we looked at the church of Ephesus, and Ephesus was a loveless church. They had great ministry. They had great wealth. Everything was going on there. They, they did a lot. But they had lost the passion for Christ. They had lost their first love. They were genuinely loveless in regards of their motivation of why they were doing what they were doing. And now we look at a church, the uh, church of Pergamum, and uh, it is a unique church. 
if you read that, as Brenda was reading that scripture, you can almost apply that to where our the church universally is today. The, the thing that the Spirit of God held against them was that they were compromising. And we live in a world today where that has become the catchphrase. Compromise. Compromise. And there are some things that you and I can't compromise on when it comes to the Word of God. We just can't. Now, we compromise a lot, don't we? In our daily lives. I mean, some of us, when we're driving, traveling, even in the city, Wichita for the day, where do you want to eat lunch? I don't know. What do you feel like? I don't know. What do you feel like? You get that? And does anybody else go through that besides my wife and I? <laughs> and then she'll say, well, just pick a place. Just pick a place. And so you pick a place and you look. And then she goes, eh. Okay, where do you want it? So she picks a place. She looks at me. We end up going to IHOP. <laughs> or, or Freddy's. She likes Freddy's. Love those fries. <laughs> and so we compromise, you know. I'm not really in the mood for a steak. <clears throat> She's not really in the mood for whatever it is. <laughs> so we compromise. We go someplace. Yeah, okay, yeah, that works. But when it comes to the Word of God, there are certain things you can't compromise on. In fact, every principle, doctrine in this book is uncompromising. Now, that may seem strict and harsh and, and uh, uh, even unthinkable to the culture in which we live, in the world in which we live. That would offend people. For There are some who are going to probably, they watch us on TV, and there may be some watching on TV, there may be some seated here, that when I say that, that we cannot compromise the truth and the principle and the doctrines laid out in this, in this Word. In this Word. That may offend people. And I, I'm not certainly, I'm certainly not here to offend people, but at the end of it all, I have to say, so be it. Be offended. Because there are certain things that we cannot back away from. We have lost the ability to stand for what is right. Do we know what is right in our world today? If you ask, if you were to sit in a classroom and ask uh, young people if there are absolutes, they're going to say, not, not really. I don't think there's an absolute. If I was to ask you, you don't have to raise your hand. But do you believe that there are absolutes in this life? You see, we live in a world that is constantly causing us to question whether the Word of God is truly the Word of God. And that is the situation kind of that Pergamos found themselves in. It was nicknamed Satan's City in John's day. That's not something you want to put on that sign as you come into town. I mean, really. Yeah, how many here look at the signs when you go into a town? I always do. What is Marion's? City between two lakes. Come city. Best place I've 
I saw, oh yeah, I, I, here recently I saw the best place I've seen. <laughs> you gotta get out a little more. <laughs> I like Marion, I do. I, I, it's a, I like this area, it's pretty. But there's a reason Kevin and Lori go to Colorado, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. They don't get up there in the mountains, look at the majestic mountains reflecting off the lake. Kevin's got his camera and he says, boy, sure's not there. <laughs> up in, in Iowa, there's a little community and as you came in, fields of opportunity. It's a town of 600. <laughs> Somebody's got them. They, they should probably hire out the catchphrase people. I mean, so their sign on their town, it was nicknamed Satan City. The Christians in Pergamos were surrounded by pagan beliefs and practices. Does that sound familiar? Does that, does that resonate within us? Do you ever feel surrounded by beliefs? that are contrary to your own. It, this, is, this is really gets into a, a sticky situation when a preacher has to preach this kind of message. It really does. because uh, A lot of people think, well, Pastor Jeff, you're just closed-minded, man. I'm really not. I, 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 I'm not. Uh, man, I'm open to a lot. I mean, we're going to have beaver on the menu. I mean, I'm open to a lot. <laughs> but there are certain things that, that we look at and that we struggle with and that surround us that just challenge us. Just challenges. This week, I have not been able to turn on the TV. The only time I turned on the TV was Wednesday to see what they were going to say about Billy Graham. Billy Graham passed this week. I shed tears Wednesday morning. I got up, heard that news, and I cried. <coughs> and I thought to myself, I texted my wife and said an era has passed. No one called people to Jesus better than Billy Graham, in my opinion. Thousands upon thousands of people came to Christ because of his simple message that Jesus can change your life. He is the one who coined the phrase, today is a day of decision. So I turned the news on Wednesday to hear and to see what they were going to say about Billy Graham. And I, I looked at two channels, and two channels gave two different opinions. One kind of cast, a, they, they did a really good job until the very end, and then they cast a little to make people go, hmm, I guess he wasn't that great of a guy after all. And then the other one just focused on his ability call people to Christ. But then you got into all the other stuff. The 24-hour news cycle of bad news. And I turned it off. Got me a cup of coffee, sat down, and said, God, sometimes I wonder why you, you, you allowed me to live during this time. I don't, I feel like I don't fit. Anybody here ever feel like you don't fit in the time in which you live? And I imagine the Christians at Pergamos felt that way sometimes. They were surrounded. They lived in a city nicknamed Satan City. And they were surrounded by pagan beliefs, pagan practices. And you have to begin to wonder, you ever walk down the street and, and just think, 
Oh. People do that all the time now. You see, when we allow that, when we allow sin to become commonplace, Which this is something you never thought you'd see. <laughs> that was fun. I'm glad that happens to more people than just me. In the middle of prayer with a family, <laughs> meeting with them to prepare for a funeral message, and my phone does that. Oh, I forgot. Silence it. That's okay. That's fun. We roll with it. But when sin becomes commonplace and the church doesn't respond to it, I think we're in the place we are now. And I think that is the problem that uh, Christ had with the church of Pergamos is that they did not draw a line in the sand and say, this isn't going to happen. Instead, they compromised. Understand something. I want, I would love it if, if people would walk through, if souls, hurting souls would walk through. How many here would be comfortable with prostitutes in our midst? I would. Drug dealers. Yes. People who, who are just on that side of, the opposite side of the law. Uh, as, as they would say down in my neck of the woods, the disreputables. Those make the church exciting. Those souls are who we are called to reach out to. Those are the people we need to be inviting to church. And not just inviting them to church, but in meeting them where they're at. Being that witness. And that takes strength. You have to know what you believe and believe what you know before you can put yourself in that situation because it is easy for them to put pressure on you to compromise your beliefs. It takes strength to be able to go into a situation and sit down with somebody. Not a lot of preachers go into bars nowadays and sit down. I remember we... we I got a, the strangest call a few years back when I was pastor in Iowa. <coughs> it was, a, it was a, a bar called Joe's. Joe's Place? Joe's Bar and Grill. Thanks. Don and <laughs> Don and I would go there on Friday nights. Every once in a while we'd go there on Friday nights because they had fresh water. There's nothing better than cold, cold, cold wild-caught fresh walleye, fried up to perfection. If you're going to saute it and bake it in butter, don't call. But if you're going to deep fry that walleye, give me a ring. And so we we go we frequent that place. And, uh, and when you live in a, our community up there that I passed in, it was only about 325 people, 325, 350 people, somewhere around there. Uh, and so this was in the next town over, and they had less. And so we walked in, and uh, it was a small place. It was a dive, if you will. And a lot of bikers, tight leather, long beards, bandanas. <laughs> leather vest and you walk in and they kind of look at you and it's packed on Friday and I said well we'll just sit at the bar for a second the bartender comes up would you like something to drink? I'll have a drink or, uh, I don't drink pop but what do we have? tea, water, I don't remember I said sure we'll have a drink they always expect you to you know but if I don't drink Coke, I'm not going to drink something else, you know. I'm, so I just said, we'll just have water or tea. She likes tea. and I don't drink tea in northern states because they mess it up. They don't put sugar in it. <laughs> I 
I pray for them all the time. <laughs> so we sat there at the bar, and you just start making a conversation, and uh, a little gal comes up, and, and as I remember it, she's like, don't you pastor over at the church in Linville? Uh, yeah. And so, you know, our ta the table came free, and we went over there. So we start going in there well, occasionally on Friday nights because they always had two specials. They either had prime rib or they had walleye. Of course, we always went with the walleye. And so I'm in my office one day. It's a Thursday. And it's about 5 o'clock in the evening. I'm just getting ready to leave. And I get a call. And... It was the owner of this bar. And she said, Reverend, uh, one of our regulars here has been diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. And we want to know if you come over and have prayer with us. I said, sure. What time? They said, well, this is not Friday. This is Thursday. And they're not running their specials. They're running what they usually do there. And so then she said, could you come about 9.30? I said, tonight? I said, yeah. So we 9.30, I show up, and this place is packed with bikers. and I mean, it's packed. And I walked in. And I have my Bible. I walk in, and uh, I walked up to the bar, and I caught the gown. That was Joe. And I said, hey, Joe. I said, I'm here. And I said, where, where do you want to do this? She goes, well, I don't, I don't really know. She goes, you know, we don't, we don't do this kind of thing. And there was a space between the bar and the other building just to outside and so I said why don't we go outside and I've been thinking about this and so I brought candles like we use at our Christmas Eve service I brought candles and I I said let's go outside it's it's 9 30 let's let's go outside and we'll have a prayer out there and so she just announced we're closing the bar down for a while we have a pastor here and he's going to take us outside, and all those that want to come out and pray for their friend, she named her, come on out. And they shut the music, the jukebox went off, and everybody, we go outside, and I stand in the middle of all these, I mean, you know, we walk out, and we're walking by all these Harleys, and, and uh, so I said, let's just gather in a circle right over here in this space right between the buildings. And I said, let's just gather in a circle. And so they got in a big circle, and I began to pass out. I said, here, I want you to take these. And I passed out these candles real quick. And I stood in the center of that circle, and I read Scripture, and I said, we're going to trust God. I said, that's all I can give you. I said, I can't, I can't make any guarantees, but I do know this. God understands your hurt for your friend. We had prayer, and we lit the candles. Then I had another prayer. And I was amazed that when I said amen, all these big bikers had tears coming down their face. They come up and thanked me, shook my hand. My belief, my conviction is I don't have to be afraid to go in that environment because I know what I believe and I believe what I know. They are not there to infect me. I am there to infect them. They are not, I'm not worried about catching the sin flu. I am there to spread 
the gospel for you. And I have to be honest with you. Owner of the bar came to Christ, became a member of my church, she kept her bar. We still went on Fridays for walleye. Life was good. But any time somebody there had an issue, who do you think they called? It was a great humbling privilege for me. It was. Because one of the things I found out is that people aren't against Jesus. People aren't against prayer. People are looking for authenticity. You and I cannot be afraid to go and take the gospel to the world. But they are looking for people who will be uncompromising in what they believe. No one holds us to a higher standard than those who don't follow Christ. Everybody in this, everybody in this room right here, we all, we all understand this, that we are sinners saved by grace. And we will say, you know, well, pick yourself back up. You need to pray. We'll pray for you. If, a, if a, somebody in here stumbles and falls, if somebody here struggles with sin, we are gracious, we are merciful, we are forgiving because we understand. We have experienced that. We need that. You hear me pray a lot. Help us not only to be the the receivers, the receptacles of God's grace, mercy, forgiveness, love. We all want that, don't we? If we pray today and we pray, God, please forgive me. We pray it every Sunday. If you do the Lord's Prayer every day, you'll pray it every day. Forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. We understand that. We are the receptacles of it. But there's a flip side to that. If we're going to be the receivers of God's grace, His love, and His mercy, then we have to be willing to be the dispensers of it as well. We understand that in the church. But I'll tell you what, there's no one in this world like unbelievers who hold you and I to a higher standard than what we hold ourselves. They expect more from us. Why? You ever ask that question? Why? Because they understand the expectation that God has for us. We don't always live that out, do we? Sometimes we get we 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 alleviate our own guilt by saying, well, we're only human. Yes, we are. You hang around me very much. You will find out just how human I am. And there's probably no one in this room more in need of God's grace on a daily basis. Trust me. But every day when I open up the Word of God, He says, Jeff, I want you to stand a little taller. I want you to reach a little higher. I want you to try a little harder. I posted, which is pretty rare for me. I repost a lot of things on Facebook, things that I think are uh, kind of valuable. But I posted this week, right after on uh, Wednesday when Billy Graham died. I shared that remembrance of how my father came to Christ. Watching Billy Graham on TV while he's lying in the hospital the day before he's going to have surgery 
that the doctor said would most likely take his life. And the young minister who walked in, sat down, watched Billy Graham with my father on TV. I tell you what, I wish fishing was this easy. After Billy Graham gave the invitation and asked you people to make a decision and pray the prayer that Billy led them in, the young preacher looks over to my father and says, Would you, would you like to pray that prayer, Carlos? And he says, Yes. My dad had been like the prize buck that everybody, all preachers were out after my father. <laughs> and here this guy who just barely out of seminary leans over and says, would you like to pray that prayer <coughs> Billy's offering? My dad says, yeah. The rest of it is history. My dad accepts Christ, makes it through the, the surgery fine, and fulfills his commitment to Christ by allowing Christ to transform him into a new creation. There's the rub. If we, if we are going to be followers of Jesus Christ, then we have to allow Him to transform us. And that starts on the inside and works its way out. Sometimes it takes years. Look at what my wife's put up with. I am not the same man she married. I have been transformed slowly. I'm like a, I'm, I'm like a caterpillar in a cocoon. I am not yet a butterfly. It's a beautiful picture. <laughs> okay, so I'm like three or four caterpillars in a cocoon. <laughs> Like I said in a funeral, I'm not the man I used to be. I'm twice the man I used to be. <laughs> but God needs followers who are allowing Him to transform them on a daily basis and believing, uncompromising in His Word. That is what the world needs today. It doesn't need... a. a, a Legislated morality. Do you, did you hear me? You cannot legislate morality. That's a pet peeve of mine. Apparently, you can legislate away morality. But you cannot legislate morality. You cannot make people be morally good and right. And so we face what we face in our nation and our culture today because we have refused to allow God to be in the public square. We have refused to allow God to be in the, in the school system. I went to school. I was just talking to somebody this morning. When I went to grade school, I remember we said the Pledge of Allegiance very first thing, and then our teacher led us in a prayer, and then we did Jack Lane exercises. <laughs> And life was good. No one was coming in and shooting at us. You cannot legislate morality, but you can apparently legislate morality out of the community. And I say it is time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise up and take the immorality of our culture and give it the boot and replace it with the morality that Scripture teaches us through Jesus Christ. We're godless. We're prayerless. We lack morality. We're indulging. Who here grew up playing video games? A few of you. Can play. I did not grow up playing video games. <clears throat> when you when they have games out, 
that you get points for killing people. What do they expect? You know what I did when I was a kid? We played Cowboys and Indians. We built tree forts. We swiped everything from a construction site one time. Please show up. <laughs> it's a true story. They were real nice about it. They said the guys, they don't mind you taking some of the scrap wood and doing whatever you're doing with it. But they'd like their box of a thousand nails back. <laughs> See what I'm getting at? We have let it go. When we do not voice and stand for what is right, who will? Who will? If we do not intervene, I know it's risky. If we do not intervene in public, when a, uh, maybe you, you witness a husband berating his wife in public, Maybe he's jerking her around by the arm. If we don't step in and say, listen, buddy, you need to back off. If we don't stand for what is right, if we don't stand for the helpless, who will? That's our call. Not to play compromise and say, well, you know, this sin is okay nowadays. It's okay. We... we the scripture is kind of iffy there. I can remember being getting in trouble, being called on the carpet when I talked about sex in a sermon one time. Well, you don't want to talk about that, Pastor. Most kids, even some adults, don't know the difference. They don't know what fornication means. Because we're afraid to address the issues of life. People are so worried about being relevant. I don't have to compromise one thing. This thing has been relevant. This book has been relevant for more than more than 2,000 years. Since Moses part of the Red Sea, this book has been relevant. God does not have to change who He is to be relevant in whatever culture or society we find ourselves in. So I call you today to stand, stand, stand with Jesus Christ. Do not compromise. You can be loving, you can be gracious, you can be merciful, you can be forgiving, you can be prayerful, you can be compassionate, but you do not have to be compromising. You do not have to apologize for following unashamedly Jesus Christ. So I'm going to not ask you to stand today, but I'm going to ask you to open up your hymns. In the hymnal, right? I don't have a bullet. What's the number? 7.30. I could have preached till 7.30, but my wife was giving me the signal. She's my catcher. I'm the pitcher. <laughs> Title of the song, Stand Up for Jesus. I didn't ask you to stand because that's a decision you have to make today. You either stand for Jesus and if you don't stand, if maybe your knees bother you. You don't have to stand. But in your heart, take a stand. But if you want to stand, you're more than welcome to stand. But I think it's time that the church make a decision on who we're with. I'm with Jesus. 
I'm not with the world. Now, I minister to the world, but I'm not with them. Philosophy? Doctrine? I'm with Jesus. Let's sing this together. Dismissed. <laughs>